What's going on everyone? Tech Tosh coming back at you guys with another video. Happy 2019. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful holiday and a great New Year's. Hopefully everybody was safe out there and got everything you wanted for the holidays as well. So I'm gonna do a quick update video on my MG248Q 144 hertz one millisecond gaming monitor. Now I did a review and an unboxing of it and I had a few comments talking about what settings do I have applied on my monitor to get the most optimal color correction display on your monitor. So I'm gonna do a quick rundown for that for you guys. It's gonna be about three steps. So I got a step to where you are Gonna adjust the actual monitor settings on the back got the profile that you can apply through the windows operating system and then i also got the monitor settings through my nvidia graphics card now i'm pretty sure they got something for the amd graphics card i'm not too sure because i never owned an amd graphics card i have a 1070 super clock nvidia graphics card so i'm gonna show you what i adjusted for that but even just if you have no none of those graphics card even just having the settings adjusted on the monitor itself will make a big difference so you pretty much get the most out of your monitor if you haven't copped this monitor definitely go check it out i'll have a link down below low for Amazon. If you're interested in a 144 hertz 1080p monitor, this is definitely the way to go. I also do a lot of editing. So as you can see, I got an IPS display ultra wide over here. So it was a lot easier for me to compare and contrast the two monitors so I can get it to my liking because I already have my IPS display monitor exactly how I want it for my editing. So you could pretty much get this on par. This is a TN panel monitor. So this is not an IPS display. So that's why you get a lot of little defects from angle viewing angles to the colors not being very rich and the black not very dark. It's a good starting point. So if you can just tinker around a little bit with the settings that I'm about to show you and get it to your liking. So let's just jump. So let's just jump. So let's just get right into it guys. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I got going on. All right, so because I can't do any type of screen recording software, it doesn't record the actual box that it pops up when you push the settings. So I gotta film the monitor. So hopefully you guys will be able to see this good. I'm gonna zoom in for you, make it a little bit more clear. All right, so here we are with the first tab. When you push the little joystick knob, you gotta push it in and it's gonna open up this. The first tab that you're gonna be greeted with is the game visuals. Pretty much all of them are all preset mode so you won't have to it's meant to so you don't have to adjust anything you just select one of these and you kind of be good to go supposedly but a lot of them are all vary in look uh, as you can see the colors are kind of slightly changed you can't kind of see everything but it doesn't put much in perspective through the camera but what i use personally since that's what we're talking about is what i use exactly i'm not going to go in depth of every mode for me personally i use user mode now the next tab down you're going to be greeted with the blue light filter uh, there's a lot of science behind this whole blue light filter stuff. Uh, if you believe in it or not believe in it, I believe in it. I got to set on my phones and stuff like that, especially when you're working late at night. If you're on your phone laying in bed, it's not good to have a blue light shining in your eyes as you're trying to go to sleep. If you guys want to know a little bit more about that, uh, just check it out. There's a lot of articles on blue light filters for your computer and your phone and stuff like that. I actually don't have it set because I got an actual software that does it for me on an actual time schedule. But you go down again, you're going to get greeted with actually the heart of everything that we're going to be talking about here is the color settings. Now, the first tab you're greeted with is brightness. As you can see, I got my brightness set to 45. A lot of people when I read forums kind of varied on where they got their brightness at. Some people said they had the brightness all the way down to 20. That was kind of a little too dim for me. I mean, even where it's at now is almost close to the too dim side. So 45 was good for me. I did have it actually up because like I said, it does seem a little dim for my eyes personally. I did have it up to almost like 65, 70. But then I did start realizing that when I was playing games late at night, I would start getting a a little headache it was just probably too bright compared to the uh, second monitor i have next to it so it kind of just would throw me off looking at both monitors so i brought it back down to 45 i think default's 50. as you can see here we got contrast i got my contrast set to 80. that seemed to be like the sweet spot for me that's something that can pretty much vary to your liking uh that's something that doesn't need to be set at 80. you don't see a huge difference when you adjust it it's more so when you're looking at colors so yeah mess around with that but i got mine set at 80. next one after that is saturation so saturation is pretty much what makes the colors pop so if you got your saturation way too low it's going to look more black and whitish if you got your saturation too high your colors are just going to be like bleeding through the lines so 65 was a sweet spot for me like i said this can vary for you but i got mine at 65. The next tab down we got color temp so what this does is pretty much change the temperature of your screen you want it a little bit more cooler which is more of blues in your screen if you want it a little bit normal if you want warmer adds a little more warm tint to it takes away the blues i got mine on user mode so that way i can adjust them individually i got my red 
red set to 96. I got my green set to 94. And I got my blue set to 88. This is something that will kind of vary for monitor because uh, some monitors I read on forums, some people had too much blue going on. Some people said it was a little too warm. So this could vary based on what monitor you received because not every monitor is alike. But this is what I have it adjusted to. This is my gaming monitor. So maybe if you're watching movies or something, it may change. I don't know. Try it out. You know what you like. Next one down though, you got skin tones. I just keep it on natural. I used to have it on reddish, but then I realized it was just a little too red and then yellow just makes everybody look sick. So I just kind of kept it on normal and then I got my smart view turned off. So we're going to go back and we're going to go into the next tab. Next tab is going to be image. As you can see, I got sharpness set to 90. We all know what sharpness is. Um, trace free i got it set to 100 now on some of the forms i haven't noticed the difference because i used to have it set to 20 then i had it set to 40 and then i have now i have it set to 100 when you look online you ask what trace free is trace free is asus's overdrive feature and it is used to reduce motion blur or ghosting while it doesn't reduce the effect it does doesn't work as well as light boost does try it out see what it is you like i got mine set to 100 i haven't noticed any difference honestly from 100 to the 20 so just kind of try it out see what you like aspect ratio default is full i got it on full and then ascr which is asus smart contrast ratio technology which enhances this displays dynamic contrast ratio up to 100 million to one which adjusts the brightness according to the content so the picture can be displayed and better dark levels and more vivid colors creating sharper and brighter images especially during video and movies that's what i just read offline that's what ascr is now what i notice when i turn it on it definitely does brighten up the screen a lot and that's why I don't have it on as you can see I don't know if you can see the difference here let's see I'm gonna pull it back now and that's on that's off on off you can see the brightness definitely bumps up when I turn it on now like I said me personally this monitor is way too bright as is so I definitely don't want to have it on maybe you can have it on and adjust the brightness down manually it's just too much adjusting I don't even need it on because it, it, like I said it will adjust to certain content that you're watching. So I don't want my settings adjusting the wrong way as I'm playing a game or something. So I just have it turned off. Now adaptive sync, that's pretty much free sync. Now I have it turned off because like I said, I do have an Nvidia graphics card. So it doesn't really benefit me at all to have that turned on unless you have an AMD graphics card. They have G-Sync monitors. Now that's more aimed towards Nvidia graphics card, but they're just definitely way up there in price. This is good if you have an AMD graphics card, you can turn adaptive sync on. Now that's like free sync, research with free sync is i'll have like i said i'll have it all down below and i gotta talk about it too much because i don't even use it and that's pretty much it guys there's not a lot of adjusting as far as the actual monitor itself it's just tinkering around a little bit what my eyes see is going to be different than what your eyes see but it's a good starting point to start at and then i'm gonna show you guys like, what i have applied as far as my nvidia graphics card settings so when you right click on the mouse here you get prompted with the nvidia controls if you have nvidia graphics card this should just be right here when you right click now this is the nvidia control panel now this thing is is wonderful because it helps you out with a lot of different things not just your color correction um you can do your setup for multiple displays adjust desktop size and resolution set up digital audio there's a lot of things you can do with this little tool here that comes with your nvidia graphics card now all we're going to talk about today is adjusting desktop color setting as you can see here you see my two monitors the one that we're talking about right now is my mg 248 q technically besides what i already did to the settings that i showed previously this gives you just a little bit more control over those settings with being able to do everything from your control channel to your brightness contrast gamma digital vibrancy and your hue now with that you also get your reference images to make sure you adjust everything to your liking and making sure everything is not oversaturated or desaturated or just plain out out of whack but i didn't necessarily use these pictures i kind of compared like i said i got two monitors you see the lg ultra wide i kind of compared between the two so what i did was get like a picture such as this and put it between the both of my monitors as you see it, it's cut off but in between both my monitors and then i would adjust the setting that way to see what is really changing and the differences and stuff like that however you may do it is up to you but that's how i did it so as you can see exactly what i did here not much i didn't really adjust anything individually everything i did was through all channels so you can see i didn't touch the brightness uh we go down to the contrast though i did boost up the contrast just a little bit
it to 55%. Everything starts off at 50%. You can see I only boosted it up 5%. Even if I move this dial, you guys won't be able to see the changes it does. So I'm not even gonna bother to change it. It just boosts up the colors a little bit. So like I said, it may vary for each monitor. So you may just be able to do the stock settings and it may be good enough for you. I just did a little bit of boosting with the contrast and I actually turned down the gamma. Now this monitor actually has a lot of gamma. That's what gives it that grayish tint to it. Makes the blacks not as deep black. Uh, that's why I boosted up the contrast. It makes the black a little bit more darker. It doesn't have that tint to it. I mean, it always will because it's a TN panel, but I get, I got it as close as I could to my IPS display. So I turned that down to 75.75. It does start off at 1.0, I believe. And then from there, I boosted up my digital vibrancy, just 5%, just to give it a little bit more pop. So that way, just the colors you can see, it just pop a little bit more. Nothing crazy. You don't want it oversaturated or you'll start getting like a, a hue around the colors and it just looks weird. So you don't want to boost the vibrancy up. You probably should never go over five, max, maybe 10%. Like if you got to go over that, then you did something wrong to your monitor. But yeah, this is very simple, guys. This is a simple but powerful tool. So all you do after that is just hit apply and everything will go straight to your profile. Now, the one thing I will say though that I had issues with is sometimes when I shut down my computer and restart it, profile doesn't reset, but it doesn't apply. So sometimes you'll notice that it kind of reverts back to whatever your settings are on just the monitor itself. I don't know why it does that, but I haven't been having that issue lately. I don't know if it was like a driver issue. I don't know necessarily what it was. You would just have to go back into your settings. Your settings will be there. It'll still be the same. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did that change? See how that changed though? I didn't look at that. Uh, it's because I'm moving the fucking thing. I had my mouse on it and it was moving the thing. But um, God damn it, did it again. But yeah, so you would just have to go back in here again. Just open it up and apply. It, your settings should already still be applied like as far as the numbers you would just have to reapply it sometimes i don't know why i did that I, maybe that was just for me but yeah that's something you'll just have to look out for but yeah that's pretty much it guys i mean it's not very complex it's just moving the dial just a little bit you know from your monitor settings to additional software settings nothing too crazy your monitor shouldn't be that far off all it takes is just a little bit of adjusting to have to where you like it so i'm gonna show you guys a couple other things here this is all additional stuff now this is if you want to apply a profile an icc profile now what these are is just pre-adjusted settings for your specific monitor that technically pros or people who are more professional in that area apply to specific monitors as you can see there's just a ton of just different monitors here uh it's very simple to apply these profiles i did apply mine I just i didn't like it just as that so i adjusted it to the way i wanted it now these just go straight to your this is like a windows thing this doesn't apply to your actual monitor settings or the nvidia control panel settings this is just like a windows profile thing that it will apply to your monitor so if you download this and install it in your monitor it doesn't change what you did to the settings on either of these or the monitor settings this is just another additional thing you can do as you can see we can find my monitor right here asus mg 24 aq uh you see how they have the numbers here 20 80 190 83 user mode now if you look it tells you what those are your brightness contrast and then you got your color controls the red green blue and then your preset mode kind of exactly like what you have in your monitor settings so it's very easy you would just click on this it would download this right here as you can see and then you scroll down here and it'll tell you everything you need to do as far as installing that profile it's not hard at all save your icc profile in the following location windows system 32 spool driver color and from there to apply the settings or to apply the profile i should say you would go into a control panel and you would go into color management and then from there you would apply the settings calibrate just you know read all this i'll tell you exactly what to do not hard very simple it's just applying the settings itself or the profile itself and there's a lot of different profiles just do your research i'm not a pro here i just did it to where i could enjoy my monitor and you know i'm not diving in deep here i'm just doing what makes my monitor look good i don't need to know every little bit about color calibrating my monitor here but if that's something you're into there's definitely a lot of information here i applied for you guys i'll have the, all these links down and below this is just a general calibration guide this is just to talk about calibrating screens overall what you need to be looking for and the different monitors 
monitors and the viewing angles, color depth, color gamut, color accuracy, potential. You know, and I'll talk about what the gamma is and the color temperature. And if those are the things you want to dive into so you kind of understand what it is exactly that you're doing, then you can do that. This will all be in the link. And it, it goes pretty in depth. So it's good reading material if that's something you want to read. I'll also link this. This is just other models of the monitors that I have. Uh, this is the one that I was actually originally going to get, but I actually got the MG24 8Q. This is the older model talking about this specific monitor because like I said, each monitor is different. Even with the models, even with the same monitor, if you have the same model, it may look different than mine. Yours might be perfect out of the box. I doubt it, but it, it could happen. You never know. Or it could be worse. But yeah, this is my specific monitor. Gives a little bit of information about it. Tells you everything and what they recommend and yada, yada, yada. So some good re reading material. If that's something you want to get into. Or if you just want to apply what I applied and just call it a day. I always suggest just reading this, just a brief overview so that we kind of get the general idea of it and then just tinker around with it. It's not, it's not, you shouldn't be doing a lot as far as moving these uh, dials around. It should be very simple, only very little adjustments like 5% here, 5% there, whatever it may be. And yeah, so it's very simple, guys. If you have any questions or concerns, comment down below. I'll do everything I can to help out. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but I'll read into it if I don't know it and I'll try to help you out the best that, that I can and if there's anything else that you have as far as things you want me to record or whatnot uh, just comment down below let me know that's gonna be it for this video guys i'd like to thank you guys for watching this video hopefully i helped you out if i did hit that thumbs up button for me if i didn't then you go ahead and hit that thumbs down but comment down below if i didn't help you out if there's something you want me to cover that i didn't cover and uh like i said i'll do my best to cover that so that's gonna be it guys y'all stay nerdy i'm out peace